Hey there, mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 35. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. So we are finishing up another five-day decluttering challenge in the Facebook group, and these ladies are on fire. I'm so proud of them, and I can't wait for you to join us. All you have to do is go to tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm and join in. So today we have a very special guest, Lisa Lazat from the Habits and Home Show. Lisa is a wife, mom of three, and cheerleader for anyone wanting to simplify their life so they can enjoy it more. Lisa has such a compelling story, and she shares a bit about it in the episode. She first tried living as a minimalist, but no matter how few possessions she owned, she still struggled to keep up with it all. And then she discovered the solution to the chaos was to simplify and systemize her home to support life-changing habits. Through this process, she's been able to keep up with the daily home management and be more mentally present with her family. Oh, and side note, Lisa also shares what it was like to live with her family in a converted RV. So fun. Lisa is a habits geek like me, and she is sharing the one daily habit that will keep your home clutter-free. Such good stuff. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen, and let's dive into today's conversation with Lisa Lazat. Hey there, Mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now, two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Hey, Lisa, thank you so much for coming on the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. I am really excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited for us to chat again, since I've had you on my podcast and I am happy to be here. Yay. So you and I connected in this podcasting space and actually do similar things and also uh, share a love of habits and being kind of habits geeks and proud to wear that. (laughs) to wear that title. And I was hoping that you could kind of introduce us a little bit to you and your family, kind of the people that you serve. And when you're not doing all of that, how you like to spend your quote unquote free time, if you have that. (laughs) I do. I do. And through habits and simplifying my life, I have been able to enjoy that more and more, you know, when you go too far and you have to come back and you're like, I don't even know who myself is, especially when we become moms, we're like, I am just doing for others all the time. Who is, who am I anyway? And so, yes, I have, I have learned. So my name is Lisa Lazad. And um, like Emily mentioned, I have a podcast as well. um, The Habits in Home Show, where I help um, like Emily, overwhelmed moms or people or anybody who wants to listen, um, deal with life and just simplify their homes, simplify their routines, and more than just decluttering, really building in good, healthy, life changing habits into their day, really learning, teaching them how to live within their capacity. Because in a world that's so busy and it's bombarding us with so many things that we need to consume, we need to buy, we need to add to our home. We are just bombarded with all of this influence. And so really encouraging women in particular to get to know yourself, get to know who you are and what your capacity is for living, for life, for home management. And so that is really my sweet spot and what I like to teach. So in my family life, I am married to my high school sweetheart. We met in um, eighth or not eighth grade (laughs) in 10th grade. And we started dating when we were 16 and he is just, just my partner in, in life. And we always 
try to encourage each other with whatever our dreams or our passions are. And we, we just have been best friends forever. And even in high school, we treated each other. You know how people will get really consumed and obsessed with their significant other, but mm-hmm. we always treated each other as if we were one day going to, going to marry someone else. And so it was more of like a best friend relationship. But yes, I was very much attracted to him as a boyfriend though. <laughs> <laughs> and so we made it through, you know, high school and college and got married and we have three children that I also homeschool. So I have a full-time work from home homeschooling mom. Wow. <laughs> so I have definitely had to learn routines and habits and time management and task management in order not to lose my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So we have a small farm here in Florida, North Florida, and we have horses, chickens, dogs, cat, um, you name it. And we're always adding to (laughs) our homestead, our tiny homestead, um, little by little. I also, in my free time, this is like, uh, I love to read and I love to garden. And I probably am just one of those like little old ladies in this 30 something year old body. I, I, when I turned 30, it was like a midlife crisis kind of thing. And I was like, Oh my gosh, my life is over. However, I was totally wrong. Life just got started. And I taught myself how to like French braid. I taught myself how to crochet. Um, I started taking up piano lessons when I turned 30. And so my thirties have been my best and I'm on the verge of turning 40 and I cannot wait to see what life has for me. So I, I love learning new things and doing new things, very adventurous, but at the same time, like the small town, you know, farm girl that just loves like sunsets on my front porch. I'm just I am like an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yep, that's about me. Wow. That is, I love, I love all of that. And, and since I'm 42, you know, I'm, I'm older and wiser and just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I can tell you the forties are fun too, but I have had some of those moments where it really is like, what actually makes me happy? And, you know, being able to find more of those things and kind of learning and growing. And so I love that so much. And I know, especially being a mom and a homeschool mom and doing all of these things, there have probably been a couple of times in your life, maybe you felt overwhelmed, <laughs> maybe just a few. Um, I, when I talk to moms about this, they're like, oh yeah, like this morning, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but I know that with the, what you've learned about habits and everything, like you said, you've been able to kind of shift some of that a little bit. And I was wondering if you take us maybe back to a time before you discovered some of these habits where you felt just completely overwhelmed in your motherhood and you're like, oh my gosh, something needs to change. And you're raising the white flag of surrender. You're like, God help me. Like this needs to change. And just what you did to really be able to take those initial steps to kind of get where you are now. (laughs) <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you, like you said, yes, just this morning or like there's been multiple times throughout my motherhood. But I remember this one time in particular where I told my husband, we had little ones, like they're all two years apart and they were probably like, I don't know, one, three and five at the time. And I remember he was a pastor at the time. And I remember telling him, I'm done. I am done. I'm no more. I'm not doing any, I'm not, he's like, you, you can't, you can't be done. Like you have to be, you have to like take care of these kids now. And I'm like, no, I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, he's like, you can't go back. (laughs) So, um, a, a, a time that I remember in particular, and I've shared this, you know, a little bit with you before and on other podcast episodes, but, this was like a pivotal moment in my life. Yes, I was always felt like I was drowning. And I kept saying that that phrase over and over and over to people. I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm drowning all of the time. And I couldn't never get out of that feeling of drowning. And I was pregnant with my third child. So this was back in 2013, pregnant with our third child, who was a little surprise. (laughs) And I, you know, it's going through all that struggle with just figuring out like how to do motherhood. And I didn't have my mother at the time to 
counsel me or coach me. She was actually in the nursing home um, with Parkinson's. And so I, I never had her my entire motherhood to come alongside me and tell me how to do this mothering thing and how to help manage my home and all the things that entailed. Um, so I was struggling through motherhood. And I remember like this time in 2013 when my I was pregnant and my father passed away. And I had to declutter and go through his home and really like, and I, it started opening my eyes that we were just tossing things that didn't matter to us. And I start, I came home and I was looking at my house and I was like, none of this really matters. (laughs) A lot of this in my home doesn't matter, but here I am spending my time picking it up and managing it and, and doing the thing. And so through that process of, you know, cleaning out my parents' house I, you know, shifted over into minimalism and I really didn't research. I didn't really even get on the internet that much back in the day, but I heard little bits and pieces. I even went to the library, like old fashioned, like go to the library, wow. check out a check out a book on minimalism, right? And I started slowly just getting rid of the things that were taking up my time. Uh, like I was spending time managing them, those things. And I used to say my kids would, you know, had little droppings all over the house. They would drop things as they walked, drop, 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 drop. And I was spending my time picking up their little droppings basically. And so that experience led me to minimalism, but no matter how little I owned, it still felt overwhelming until I learned about habits and habit stacking and routines and we actually, I actually learned that through, we, we moved out of our house, our 2000 square foot house. And my husband stepped down from his pastoral position and we didn't know where we wanted to live. So we were like, oh, let's just go live in an RV and travel around, you know, an hour's radius of where my husband works, his new job. And we'll, you know, have that lifestyle, that, that adventure, but through, I never, I didn't realize it at the time going into it, that living in that tiny space would be the best thing forever, like for my life, for my motherhood, for learning good life skills. Like we lived in this 300 square foot, um, RV. It was a converted bus and it didn't have slide outs. It didn't have a bunkhouse. Like you have these fifth wheels that have bunkhouse. No, it was like you had a hallway and my kids slept on either side of the hallway on the couches. And we had a pullout bed for the third one. And then our, our room was at the back. And thankfully we did have a washer and dryer and, but we didn't have places to store clutter. We didn't have places to like leave dishes out on the counter or in the sink. Like we had to pick up as we went or it would be pure chaos. So that is when my minimalism, the the journey of becoming more minimalist and the habits came in and they basically married each other in my life. And when we moved out of our bus a, a year and a half later, we moved into a big farmhouse and it was like, okay, how do I apply what I learned in the bus to this huge house that I can just fill up with all the stuff? I didn't want to go back. And I was really digging my heels in the sand. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so overwhelmed. And I learned to hold back. I learned to have like restrain. And I, I realized that I could create a cozy space that could function the what was needed for my life without it being cluttered or filled up or have all of the things that you see out in the world that the things all over the kitchen counters, you know, all the pretties, all the, you know, decor. And I learned how to make it perfect for me, even in the larger space. And so we've been able to stay up on our laundry routine. Um, The things that we, the skills that we learned in the bus, we just applied them to now, our, our bigger home. And I'm forever grateful for that. Wow. That's such an amazing story. And I think it is so common when you are moving into a bigger space to have that, that clutter creep, you know, (laughs) I've heard it called just like, well, I had the space for it, you know, might as well. And 
what I love also that you're saying, because sometimes because I'm so affected by my environment, I have kind of gone through these waves of decluttering and minimalism, but I've also recognized, like you were saying, that you need to have a system around your stuff. Like it doesn't matter if you have a ton of stuff or you don't have very much at all. If you don't have a system, because there's constantly things coming into your home, just like mail and school papers and, you know, necessities, even if you're not buying a lot. Um, So I think that it's great. Like you said, you kind of married the minimalism and the habits together. Mm -hmm. And I know that the tips that we're going to be getting into are going to be so helpful for the mamas that are overwhelmed, that are like, like you hear all the time too. I just have no idea where to start, you know, when it comes to routines, when it comes to decluttering and, you know, anything where I have to develop a system, like where do I start? So I would love to know when it comes to habits, if there's one habit that you would really encourage moms to kind of do every day to maintain that clutter-free home that hopefully we get to at some point, (laughs) but then when we do, how do we keep it up? Like what are, what are sort of the habits that we need to adopt? Yes. So this is the number one habit that I have personally felt that's been life-changing for me. And it's really a mindset shift first. And then you develop this like desire to want to do. Okay. So our habits, whenever we want to establish a new habit, we have to have like this identity of who we want to be, what we want that, that thing to do for us. And so it, it creates this longing and desire in us of what the end goal is, what we're going, the re, the reward that we're going to get from completing that habit on a daily basis. So I have this one life-changing habit that I do every day. And it is just resetting. And I started developing this habit and this mindset of reset by first starting with my kitchen sink and my kitchen counters and just resetting my kitchen sink and my kitchen counters every single night. And once I got, and I loved the reward that I got from that because I was able to wake up the next morning And it was a gift I gave myself every single morning. I wasn't giving myself sloppy leftovers from the day before. I was giving myself the gift of starting fresh every single day. And so when I would lay down at night and I would think about, oh, I didn't do my reset or the dishes are still in the sink. Okay, I can, it's okay. I can do it more. Oh no, I was like jumping out of bed and running, you know, getting in there. And I would even like do it even faster because I was like, well, I'm not letting this steal my free time in the evening. So I'm going to do this even faster. And so that is the one place where I started or that I've been able to like put into practice and it trickled on to other resets and this, this mindset of resetting. And so now I have this evening routine, which I also have a free checklist that if you want to print out my evening routine or my evening reset, or I give you a blank one that you can create your own, you can go to habitsandhome.com and grab that free checklist. And it's a daily reset checklist. And what I do is I picked five things, any more than five, it's too much for me. And I I listed out five things that I want to reset and I actually reset based on the flow, the eve, our evening flow. And something that I teach people is to set your home up in an assembly line fashion, like your routines, how you move throughout your house. Think, have an assembly line mentality about it because what happens is we waste so much time and so much energy going from room to room, back and forth, back and forth, like when we're cleaning, but restrain yourself from going to a different room, complete everything that is done, meant to be done in that room before you step out of that room. And people that have ADHD or have trouble focusing, this is, is extremely helpful for them. So for me, my evening reset follows the flow of our evening. Okay. We eat dinner. We reset the kitchen. We relax in the living room. Then we reset the living room. Then we go into the bathroom and brush teeth. Before we go to bed, we reset the bathroom. Then we tuck our kids into bed. We take a quick moment to reset the bedroom. And then at night, when I'm laying down at night, I'm resetting my mind by just making, getting on my calendar, looking at what's, 
on my list to do tomorrow, um, any places my kids need to go, preparing myself. So that's my like personal reset is like I'm brain dumping any notes that I want to take, you know, write down any ideas that I have. And then it le- it, le- it just frees me that I don't have anything else to do. And I'm able to like have my personal time. So I would say my number one habit that I encourage everyone to do is a reset. And on those lines, um, I want to, I, I think back of like where this, you know, all these influences that led me to where this I am now. And Charlotte Mason, she is an educator and I love her I, homeschooling. That's someone that you typically will research. And I was also a public school educator. And so I've learned this as well. Um, but she focused on habits and teaching kids habits and like taking one habit, even like the habit of paying attention. Like we don't have those basic life skill habits and just breaking it down to the microscopic tiniest of habits. And I loved what she taught. But then you also have another educator, which is Maria Montessori, who she says to reset the room before you leave. So y'all look at, look at how these two like educators in history have the habits that they're, you know, saying, you know, yes, teach your kids habits, learn habits, but it also reset the room to back where it's to its baseline so that it's ready for the next person to come in. It's ready for you. You are giving yourself the gift of when you come back in the room, it's back to where it, you know, where it started. And so I just love those two ideas of having the habit of reset. Oh, I love that too. And I love, like you said, we're all about saving our most precious resources of time and attention and energy. And when you have that logical flow from how, for how you're actually living your life, then it makes it so much easier to incorporate that into your everyday life. Uh, And I, I'm guessing maybe you can elaborate on this kind of sharing that with your husband also, because I know for me, like ours is, you know, dinner's done. I'm cleaning up the kitchen and kind of working on that reset while he's starting the boys, you know, with their showers. So it's really helpful if you can kind of have that support, um, you know, if you, if you have a partner or a husband to just like tag team, you know, on some of that so that you can have that be a little more efficient. Because like you said, if you're doing more than four or five areas, it can probably get to be a little overwhelming, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely helpful to have a partner to help you, your spouse. Um, And the biggest thing is communication. I always, and I'm sure that you encourage your, your clients as well, when you want to change anything, any routine, any habit, any lifestyle shift, you always start with you first. You always start. I know a lot of people that get so excited, especially in like coaching or anything, or they listen to a podcast and they listen to this grand idea and they're like, okay, now we're going to do this. And they want everybody to get on board with their idea before they ever put it to practice first. And so I always say, start with something that you can do first and be consistent with it because your family members are going to see your effort. They're going to see this change in you. They're going to see this peace that you are experiencing because when you go into it, trying to get the masses on board with you before you even establish like the roots or the foundation, you're going to end up being frustrated with them when they fail. And when they don't do their part. And so I think really establishing that foundation with yourself, you're going to have so much more grace when you get them on board. And so I think communicating, first of all, telling your, your people, your family, what this, this, you know, thing is that you're going to do for you first and don't even mention their involvement in it yet. Really say, I want to let you know that I want to, I want to be better. I want to feel better. And so right after kitchen, I'm going to do this thing, you know, called a, a, an evening reset, a daily reset. And I'm going to, you know, reset the kitchen. And if you want to help me and be a part of it, I would love for you to do that and invite them and say, how, 
what, it, how it's going to benefit you, how you're going to, um, you know, get something out of this or get the peace that's going to come from this. And I, so I always say, focus on yourself first, but then once you've established that and you feel good about that, I think our people want to help us. They really do want to love us and serve with us. So just give them, you know, and, and it, what do they say? You can, you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. I think the way we talk and the way our tack that we use, if we can say it with sweetness, my husband says, he's like, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. <laughs> And I tend to be like a really straightforward person, but I've really had to learn how to like be calm, be sweeter, be more peaceful in the way I approach ideas, in the way I ask for things. Um, so for instance, how I love how you said you're resetting the kitchen and then your husband is getting the kids ready for uh, for bed. And when my kids were little and they didn't really get themselves ready for bed, we did that. But then as the kids have gotten older, I have brought them into, Hey, mama really wants to rest and watch TV or read a book after dinner too. So how about we, before you leave, let's all take care of what's, what's ours. Okay. So I, we have this little routine right after, after dinner, you wash, dry and put away. And that's our system for washing the dishes. We don't even use our dishwasher because that just takes too long. <laughs> so we, I just fill up a soapy basin of water and they, if they, they have a plate, if they have a cup, if they have a fork, it literally takes like a, maybe a minute after they eat, before they leave, you got to catch your kids before they leave to wash, dry and put it away. And you can really start them pretty young. If you have like step ladder or you know, just get them into that habit. And now I would probably say 90 to 85% of the time, all the, the dishes that my kids use now, they take care of it, wash, dry, and put it away. And if they don't, if I catch them, I'll say, Hey, who are you leaving that for? And they're like, I like that. Oh, because it, it like, they either say, Hey, I'm leaving it for you, or I'm leaving it for myself to do later. And if they say I'm leaving it for myself to do later, I'm like, just, just take care of it right now. That way you're giving yourself a gift that you don't have to come back later. So if I don't catch them and I, I come home and the sink is full, I'm like, Hey guys, there's some dishes in here that somebody left for me and I didn't do any of these. And they're like, Oh yeah, that was me, mom. And I'm like, okay, come, come to them really quick. But it it's just like, first of all, I say, always say, start with yourself first, get those roots and those foundations so that you're feeling good about yourself and your family can see the example that you're setting and then slowly teach them new habits for your, for them. Yeah, no, that's really powerful. And just as far as like where they actually start with it, I think that's such great advice. And just like by leading by example and being able to make it simple. That's one of the things I love about that. Like, can we look at how do I make this simpler for me and my family? Well, maybe that is we don't use the dishwasher and that was what works best for our family or, you know, what is something that we can change something in the routine to make things kind of flow, you know, a little bit better. And I feel like with my boys, we're constantly kind of testing out uh, new ways, <laughs> especially yeah. for the evening. Cause for me, we're still kind of laying beside them before they go to sleep. And then I come out of the room and I'm like, wait, what, like what time is it? And the last thing I want to do is clean up anything in the kitchen or really anything, you know, in the living room or anything. So that is really helpful. And I guess, you know, if we're, if a mom is starting some of these steps and getting those foundational roots, like you said, as far as like the reset habit, and then she's still, you know, finding herself overwhelmed because it's like, okay, well I did the kitchen and yeah, I was able to do a little bit of the living room, but there's still so much, like there's just so much in my house and there's so much to do. And I just don't want to spend my whole night doing this. What would you say to someone who's still feeling overwhelmed by the amount that she has to reset? Yeah. So if she's feeling overwhelmed, I want you to see that as a sign that something needs to change. Okay. That's kind of like your, your test or your telltale sign of like the red flag, the, the alert, 
you know, the alerts are going off. If you're overwhelmed, then you're probably managing too much. And so that's where the decluttering comes in and learning what's in your capacity. So I like to, a lot of people, when they think of minimalism, they think of like bare minimum. They think of like sparse, like hardly anything. However, I like to teach people of mindful minimalism. Like what does minimalism look like to you? Minimal minimalism might look different from you than it does from me. My capacity for what I can handle is very small and it gets smaller and smaller the older that I get and the more that I learn and I'm on this journey. I'm like, yeah, I can't handle that. That's that can't be in my home. That can't be in my life. And you get, you get stronger about your boundaries, about your social influence. And I think when somebody is overwhelmed, okay, first of all, we need to take, take that as a sign and alert. Okay. I've gone too far. I am living beyond my capacity. And I want you to put, put that definite, that term into practice. I am living beyond my capacity because once you name the problem, then you can identify the steps that you need to take to rectify the problem. Okay, so if I'm living beyond, think of like a a cup of water. It only has a certain capacity. And when you fill that cup up beyond its capacity, it starts overflowing and it starts making a big mess. Well, when we, we are the cup, and when we have too much coming in, it starts overflowing and it makes a big mess. So getting to know yourself, knowing what your capacity is, you don't have to go hardcore. I, I, I think a lot of people, and especially in like Marie Kondo, you know, her teachings, she's like, you have to do it all or, you know, but I really feel like you can ease into it. You could say, no, that's beyond my capacity. I'm going to weed you out. And so that's where the decluttering comes in. When you are getting down to your personal capacity, you are take, bringing in this mindfulness of saying no, saying, oh, that's, I only use that thing once or twice a year, but I'm looking at it all year long. I'm moving it all year long. That's really not valuable in my life. And so, like I said, um, If you want to instill and you want to put to practice this idea of resetting, but you find yourself overwhelmed by it and you're not getting to the satisfaction that you really want to the, to the level you really want, then start weeding out and decluttering. That is so incredibly helpful. And I am a big proponent of the capacity (laughs) idea. Once I had that mindset shift, it was like, oh yes. And I can more easily draw that boundary around like, this is my capacity to be able to manage it and then not feel like bad about it and not have shame around it because it's going to ebb and flow in different seasons of our life and motherhood. And that's okay. So yes, definitely on the same page. And I would love it if you could uh, tell us all the ways we can connect with you. I'll make sure to link to the daily reset checklist in the show notes, but please tell everyone where they can connect with you. Well, the more and more, like I said, the older I get and the more um, I'm leaning into this, the less capacity I have for social outlets. So I am not even going to refer y'all to social media. I am there, but I'm pulling back more and more from that, those platforms. So the best place to connect with me is first listen to the podcast. I share lots of ideas for habits, habit training, your kids, resetting, having that habit of resets systems, different systems that will help you complete these, um, daily chores in your home, um, at the habits and home show. So that's the, the number one place, but then also, um, I have a blog you can find me at, um, habitsandhome.com and my free daily reset checklist is over there as well. Yay. Fantastic. Well, I will link to all of that and thank you again, Lisa. This was such a great conversation and love the idea of reset. It's been such like a blessing to me in my own life. And so you gave some amazing actionable tips for how we can implement. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. 
And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. In Apple Podcasts, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.